archives of Prasar Bharti presents the timeless treasure of golden era. Padma Sri La Sanjeev Ali Silo, I is all Mizoram is sitting with me. I am Rosa Machongtu, Mission Veng Thang, I is all Mizoram. I count myself to be very fortunate that for I have an opportunity to interview one of the most popular women, Padma Sri La Sanjeev Ali Silo who got her Padma Award in the field of literature. At the same time, she is also a singer, soloist, a radio artist. She has many distinctive features and works in the society. Now I am going to ask many questions about her. Uh, good morning, madam. Good morning. Thank you, madam, for your spare your valuable time for this interview. And I'd like to ask you something okay, about you. you. For my first questions, could you tell me when and where were you born and brought up? Okay. On the 15th May 1949, I was born at Thingsai village. Thingsai village, which is 10 kilometers from Myanmar border. On Sunday morning, I lived there till I was a teenager. Is Thingsai village your original village since your grandparents? No. If not, why did you live there? Both my parents were working in the school in that village. They were teachers. I Both. see. You are the child of teachers. Yes. Then when you were a teenager, you left that village. Why did you leave that village? When I was a teenager, I left my village because I want to join better school here in Aizol. Which school did you join? St. Paul's High School. In which Aizol. class? Class 9. In 1965. Yes, St. Paul's High School is one of the best high school in Mizoram. Yes. I see. Thank you. Could you tell me names of your father and mother? My father's name is Mr. S. Van Chuma. He is uh, 84 years old now, in 2006. Yes. My mother was Sab Tangi Chong Tu. She died at the birth of my youngest brother, on 11th March 1972. She was only 44 years old at that time. Oh, sorry. It's a sad news. Your father's name is S. Van Chuma. What does S stand for? Actually, S stands for Silo. Yes, Silo. your name is also La Sanjali yes, Silo. Silo. Okay. How many brothers and sisters have you? We are 11 of us, that means I have seven brothers and three sisters. I am the eldest one. Oh, are they still alive now? No, one of my brothers... Has left the world. Yes. Oh, last sorry. Last year? Yes. Oh, sorry. Then when and where were you married? I got married on the 27th June 1978 at the Presbyterian Church, Mission Veng, here in Aizol. Oh, in 1978. 78, yes. Who was the pastor who joined you together? Uh, the pastor was Lal Chuan Lian. Lal Yes, a I see. He, pastor he is a, one of the most popular pastors in Mizoram yes. Presbyterian Church. Can you tell me the name of your husband and his occupation? My husband's name, Mr. Lal Din Liana. He is a district adult education officer here in Aizol District. Oh, congratulate you. You have a a okay, good husband. <laughs> He's an officer in adult education. Yes. And your parents were also teachers. Yeah. And most of the members of your family were engaged in the field of education. Yes, in education. Uh, thank you very much. Almost all uh, of us. How old were you when you went to marry? I was 28 years old when I got married in 1978. Oh, thank you. Quite old, no? Yes, now... How many children have you? Sons, daughter, and what are they doing? Okay, I have two sons and one daughter. Our first born son, Jonathan, has stopped his studies and he's now helping us in household works. My second son, Benjamin, nearly finished his course of Bachelor of Engineering now in 2006. And my daughter, Marina, is now studying in... Class 12. Class 12. In which school she's studying? Uh, Mizo Higher Secondary School here. Now, we shall come to education. Okay. When and where did you start your schooling? 
Where did you join your first school? Both my parents were teaching in middle school, as I have told you. Yes. Yeah, so they really gave importance to education. My mother took me to the girls' school when she was working while I was a very small girl. I can still picture how she used to let me stand on the desk and sing. Yes, you started to sing very early. Yes. Here you say girls' school in your original village, Thingsai. Yes. She was working there in There was girls' school? Yes, girls' school. Oh, I see. Up to what stage did you study in formal educational institution? Actually, my parents hired a home tutor for me. So I started going to normal school when I was reading only in class two, up to bachelor degree. You have told me that you joined St. Paul's High School when you finished HSLC. Which college did you join? I finished my HSLC in 1968 from St. Mary's School in Shillong, Meghalaya. Yeah. Then you continue your college? Yeah, in, in that college, St. Mary's College in Shillong. Okay, thank you. In your studies, were you an average or above or below average among your classmates? Okay. I used to be above average among my classmates, actually. I gave my primary school leaving certificate examination when I was nine years old. I got first division, and I received oh. merit scholarship, too. Oh, I was in the good. ninth rank. Nine. I'm one of the top ten. Yes. That means, you know. Top ten, you mean in Mizoram or in all Assam? Yes, in Mizoram. Oh, thank you very much. You above average. In the middle clear. school leaving certificate exam also, I got first division, standing at 11th position. That time, special scholarship. Yes, I received. see. In those days, there was special scholarship. Yes. I, and I then finished class 7 and 8 at Tingsai High School. I used to be in the first and second rank. The headmaster of our school presented me a textbook of commercial geography for my good result also, I still remember. Oh, very good. <laughs> when I was in class 9, I shifted to St. Paul's High School, Aizol, as I have told you, yes, yes. which was the best school in Mizoram at that time, which keeps a high standard of education. Teachers in, at those times were Roman Catholic brothers coming from France, Canada, and so on. Oh. I used to secure 14th and... 15th position in that school. Generally in those days, how many students were in your class? Here, your position was normally 14th or 15th. What is the total strength of students in your class? In my class, I remember about 30 or 40, something oh, like that. I see. In the year 1966, uh, while I was reading in class 10, there was an insurgency in our state, so I could not continue my education. So I fled from Aizol to my village, Tingsai, all the way on foot. I stayed at home that year, 1966. How far village. was Tingsai from Aizol? Oh, more than 200 kilometers, I think. More than 200? Yes. That you finished on foot? Yes. You know, almost oh. 10 days. Almost 10 spent, days. Yeah. Yeah. And my parents then sent me to Shillong. The next year, that means 1967, uh -huh. to study class 10 in 1967, I was admitted at St. John Boscos Convent, Cherapunji, Meghalaya. Do you know Cherapunji? Yes, Meghalaya is now a full state. Yes. In those days, it, was, it was under Assam. Yes, it was under I Assam see, state. I uh, there I had Naga, Garo, Anglo Indian, and Kasi France. A few other Mizos were also there in that convent. Teachers were Roman Catholic sisters, among them were Irish, South Indians, and so on. I wrote my matriculation exam at St. Mary's School, Shillong. I remember I passed in the second division under Guwahati Board of School Education. Yes, I, a very good. Second division was very good, I know. Yeah, because at that time. under Guwahati Board of School Education, to pass in the first division was so hard. Yeah. I understand that. And then, no, I then studied from pre-university, I mean PUC, to BA in St. Mary's College as a hosteller. What were your combinations in subjects? 
MBA in, in BA. philosophy and honors in education subject. Oh, still, you are engaged in education. Yes. Since mm-hmm. you are parents, they were teachers, and now you are working as a teacher. You are. You yes, I'm still in uh, education, education department till now. <laughs> what was your ambition while being a student? My ambition those days was to become an IAS officer. I see, very good ambition. <laughs> Because you know, there was a girl from Sikkim mm. in the same hostel who after graduation got into central service, I still remember. Yeah. And I was so inspired that I felt I would be able to do the same. Yes. So I filled up the forms and sent it before my BA final exam. But unfortunately, sadly, just oh. before my final exam, due to the demise of my mother, my father asked me to come home to Mizoram yes. and look for a job to help him. Yes. To look after my younger brothers and sisters. Yes. So I soon found myself working in high school. Yes. Because of the early, untimely expiry of your mother, yeah. you could not fulfill your ambition mm-hmm. while being a student. Yeah, that's right. As you mean, Indian administrative service. Yes. Had you any problems in the course of your studies? Actually, I did not have much problems in my studies in those days. I never failed. Mm. I passed my BA with honors in education. I stood in the fourth position, I still remember, in oh, the Guwahati Board good, of Examination. Very good result. Guwahati University, I mean. Yes. In which year did you pass your BA? In 1972. 72. Yes. Then after that, you stopped your education or did you do any further? No. Further uh, studies? No. I finished my BA in 1981 and I completed BA in 1981. Yes. And then, you know, I have finished my master degree in history subject 33 years after getting bachelor's degree. <laughs> yes, very long period after. When you pass your MA, how old were you? Oh, when I passed my MA, MA yes. history, I was uh, 56. 56? Yes, yeah, my uh, chronological yes, it's age. It's a distinctive uh, history. Quite old. Quite old. Yes. I think there are few people like you who passed their <laughs> MA after more than 50 years. Oh, or, maybe. Uh, you also passed your MA. When but you I was younger than you. <laughs> yeah. When I passed my MA, I was only 43 years. Okay. So I were much older than me. <laughs> In which subject were you interested and not interested? You mean? Well, you were a student. Uh, from high school or in college? Okay, well, also. in high school, I used to find geography interesting. Yes. But now, my interest has shifted to history, I should say. Oh. I never find mathematics interesting. In fact, algebra and geometry are the subjects I hate most. You hate most. Then, could you tell me why your interest is shifted from geography to history? What compels you? Because, you know, when I started writing some books, I started writing oh. history and I done some, I mean, the original, Mizo originals and all oh, that. So I, I shifted to history that my studies compelled me to make me interested in history. Did you also study Hindi? Yes, I used to study a little bit of Hindi from oh, up to class 4 to class 8. Why did you study Hindi? You know, after my appointment as a teacher for secondary schools in Mizoram, the Union Territory Government of Mizoram at that time faced financial difficulties. Yes. So, hoping to receive more funds from central government oh, on the ground idea. of Hindi propagation, I should say. So, we the new appointees were compelled to undergo one-year training in Agra, oh, UP, oh, Agra. Agra to take up Hindi as an additional qualification. So, to be able to teach still at least uh, class 8 in high school, standard. So, but it is very difficult to learn so much in just one year. Oh, I see. So, we soon managed to learn but how to write, but we don't continue to speak in Hindi since we never use, you know, likna aata hai, bolna katin hai. Oh, okay, okay. Understand? So, the, uh, <laughs> did you teach Hindi subject in Your school, class 8? Yes, yeah, some 
for some about years. Uh, more, more than 10 years I was teaching. Uh, yeah, I see. Uh, <laughs> only in class 8, but I don't know if it will be equivalent to BA or not, but it seems uh, if we want to study BA, we need to finish bridge course first. Anyway, okay. since Hindi is the official language of our yes. land, our it's very country, important. it's important. Very important. Then we have to know, we have to understand, we have to learn. But as for you, you underwent training in Hindi, it's yeah. a good course. Does your study of Hindi help you? Of course. After, what? After finishing one year Hindi course, you know, the government gave me one year increment. So, salary, uh, in it. Yes. salary, yes. But in B.Ed, I shifted myself to English medium. So you are no longer Hindi, Hindi no, teacher? No, no more. <laughs> okay, okay. Now may I ask you about your occupation? What is your present occupation? I'm working as headmistress in government comprehensive model in Aizol here. Before you joined your present school, did you have any other job or the same job in other school? Could you tell me in detail? Yes, I did various jobs. I was working as a casual announcer in All India Radio, I was all stationed in 1972 oh, here. Oh, you have station. become an, an announcer. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> when I was waiting for my BA result. Oh, okay. You know, our duties in those days included that of news reading as well as English announcer. After translating the slow speed bulletin yes. broadcasted from Delhi, we used to read the news in the evening. It used to be a hectic schedule, actually. Uh -huh. While working as a casual announcer, I was also working in private high school, that is Central High School for four months. That is in 1972. 72. Yes. What subject did you teach? I teach most school? of the subjects except at mathematics and science. <laughs> okay. That After means... that, you know, I worked as government high school teacher. From I got an appointment, that means. I see. From 1st February 1973, and uh, newly appointees were compelled to undergo, as I have told you, one year training in Agra in UP to study Hindi. And after that, I joined at Nathial High School, government high school Nathial, and worked for about four, uh, five months in 1974. And then in the JL Higher Secondary School for more than 30 years. More than, More than 30 years. years. In the same school? Yes, still I was oh. promoted to have mistress on the 22nd August in 2002. You I, have been teaching in the school for many, many years. Yes, so. I continued in the same school as the headmistress oh. in that school. I mean, I then joined the government Aizawal High School on May 20, 2005, till I was transferred to government comprehensive model school Aizawal on 17 February 2006. I see. While you were teaching in school, as a teacher, what subject did you teach most? I teach as, you know, social, uh, social studies, studies yes. and language. That means Mizo language. Okay. Those you days, actually, you know, I taught all the subjects except science and mathematics. From 1990 onwards, I taught Mizo subject in class 9 and 10 okay. until I was transferred to other school. Actually. As an art teacher, you could teach different subjects. Yeah. In those subjects, which subject were you interested most in teaching? I like a Mizo. Mizo. Yes, we do. <laughs> Mizo <laughs> subject. Okay. You were working as a teacher for a long time. Yes. And after that, you have been promoted to headmistress. Yes. You are following the footsteps of your parents. Yes. They were teachers, you have told me, and you are teacher too. Anyway, are you interested in teaching? Yes, of course, I enjoy teaching, actually. It is a pleasure to teach the students hey, things which they do not know before, you know. Oh. Besides, uh, teaching was the occupation of my parents, so I like it. Okay. I like teaching. Yes, very good. If a teacher is interested in teaching, it is benefit to the students. Yes. As far is. as my knowledge is concerned, some teachers are not interested in teaching. That is not good. But you are interested in teaching and you have been teaching for a long time. So I know that you are a good teacher also. <laughs> Do you sometimes want to change your job while uh, being a teacher? I never have the desire to change my job. 
I'm quite satisfied with teaching profession. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you very much. That okay. shows that you are quite interested in it. Then, while being a teacher, have you any problem? In my present job, you mean? Yeah, in your present job. And well, you were a teacher also before you become a headmistress. Okay. And both. Oh, yes. I do in have some problems concerning my job. There was a confusion regarding my appointment. You know, the state government thinking that I was appointed as a Hindi teacher delayed my promotion to headmistress for eight years. For eight years. Eight yeah. years. It's not a matter of joke, oh, you know. Oh. <laughs> well, my promotion was due way back in 1994, actually. Mm -hmm. Many of my junior colleagues had preceded my promotion. Because the government thought you that you were a handy teacher? I think so. Is there any rules that could bar a promotion to headmistress from a handy teacher? I don't know any such rule. I was unlucky, I think. <laughs> I don't know. Then... When will you retire from your present job? Okay, I think in the year 2012 AD. Okay, you have some years to serve as headmistress. Almost, about five years more. <laughs> okay. Well, madam, now let me come to other subject. People know you that you are a singer. Therefore, I would like to ask you some question about singing. Okay. How do you think that people know you well in the beginning, as a singer or as a writer or as a composer or what do people think of you? I think as a singer. A singer? Yes. Yes, I think so. Because think so. you have recorded many, many songs in yeah. All India Radio also. In what grade, first, what is your grade now as an artist in All India Radio? I'm grade A artist in All India Radio. Since when? Since 1975, that means I received a letter from Director General All India Radio Delhi in 1975, February, in the month of February, I still remember. So I was a great artist from grade B high. B high. Okay, okay, thank you very much. In what grade did you start? Since when? I think I started as grade B artist in Shilongo Hati All India Radio Station. From 1969. 69? Yes. Surely. Is there any lower grade than B? I don't think so. I oh. don't know. So far. Okay. Any radio artist started in grade B, you mean? Now, I have come to know that uh, from All India Radio program, question and answer program, when the question was, who is the artist in All India Radio who recorded the most songs in All India Radio as all station? Yeah. And I know that the answer is, that sounds very silo. <laughs> it is you. So I want to know how many songs have you recorded in All India Radio and what kinds of songs could you tell me, please? Okay, I have recorded, you know, various types of songs like uh, Mizo devotional songs, love songs, Mizo modern songs, patriotic songs, and so on. Altogether, I think there are about 450 songs, maybe more than that also. Nearly 500. Then. Yes. But, you know, some of them were not preserved properly because those days spools have been used, you know, for recording. Many spools have been broken and many were accidentally erased. Oh, so, so sorry. So sorry. Unlike today, a computer was not yeah. utilized in those days. So... You don't keep by yourself at home also? No. It's so sorry. Then, could you tell me your first song recorded in All India Radio? When did you record and where? Oh, sure, I can tell you. I still remember it was in 1967. That time, you know, I sang patriotic song in Shillong, Gohati Station, in the name of other group. But I sing solo. One of the members of the yes, group? Yes, yes. I was one of the members, but I sang alone. Yes, yes. In my name, I recorded Mizo Love song in 1969 at Shillong Station, Shillong on Station. Radio. There, do you remember how many songs did you record and what were they? Definitely, I remember very well. Mm. You know, that time I recorded three songs. Three songs. Mizo Love Song, Love song Modern yes. Songs. Yes. What were the titles of the songs? The titles of the songs were, uh, number one was Nun Hui. Oh, Nun Hui means, you know, past life. Past life. Yes. yes. And the second song was Puanang Anlo Tulzo Ta. 
That means, you know, like bloomy days have faded away like flowers, flowers something yes. like that, you know. Yes, okay, okay. <laughs> then the third one? The third one was min han don vemo. Give me the meaning in English. The meaning goes like this, you know, something oh. like this. What she think of me? Would she Something think like of me? Would she or he? Uh, yeah. If would she think of me, it seems to be the composer is a man. Yes, uh, but the, the singer was a female. <laughs> uh, but the composer of the song may be a man. Yeah. Uh, could you tell me who was the composer? Yeah, the composer was a very popular composer in those days. His name was Johnny Lal Thang Lian Nam De. Now he mm. is a pastor now. <laughs> yeah. He's a, a charge. Pastor. Yes, church pastor. In which church denomination? Baptist mission. Baptist, Baptist mission. mission. Yes, a church minister have composed a love song in yeah, the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then, since when did you start singing before public? I think you sang before public, before you recording all in the radio. Since when did you start singing before public? In the year 1966, during insurgency in Mizoram, I was in my teen at that time. There was a, a big reception, you know, for about 300 MNF volunteers. MNF means Mizoram National Front yes. volunteers. They came to our village. So I sang without any music in the home of uh, VCP, Village Council President. His oh, name was Bu Saizika. I still remember. I sang patriotic song in that occasion. I was so shy and, and I was shaking like anything, you know. <laughs> Those days there was no PA system, public address system. Uh, at the time, even in Isol, I think there was no public address system. Yeah. A month after that, you know, some army officers visited our village. So, at their reception in Halipad, again I sang with my sister, Rote, my younger sister, Rote. Mm. We sang Sikni Eng, which is composed by Kesi Lalvonga, late IFS, retired. It was very difficult to sing loudly and beautifully without PA system. <laughs> Even in open air? Yeah, yeah, in yes. open air. In addition to that, if it is open air, it would be quite difficult to sing. I understand, of course. Yeah, of course. Could you tell me your first song appearance as a soloist? When and where? All right. I was staying in St. Mary's College Hostel, as I've told you. Don't when I was doing my BA first year, wow. in the year 1970. During that time, you know, I was invited to sing in youth fellowship concert organized at Don Bosco Hall, a very big hall in Shillong. I see. I got a permission from our principal, Mother Anne, So I went out to sing with microphone for the first time in public. That was in Shillong? Yes. The capital uh, of Meghalaya now. Yeah, yeah. That evening, you know, I sang a gospel number, Kachandam Tu, Vabo Stanin, and one more devotional song, I remember. Uh, that was the first time I was, yeah. Can you tell me the meaning of the, the Kachandam Tu, Vabo Stanin? Which means, you know, a straying from my savior, something oh, like that. Yes, running away from yeah. my savior. Like yes, that. yes. Okay. Yeah, that was the first time I was known as a singer, I think. And the beginning of my fame. I should say, oh, apart wow. from my songs in All India Radio. Could you also tell me when did you last record in All India Radio? My last recording was uh, in the month of December 2005, only two months back. Okay, okay. <laughs> How many songs did you record that time? That time, just before Christmas, you know, four songs. Do you remember them? The yeah. titles of those songs? All of those songs are Christmas songs. Christmas yes. songs. You recorded many, many songs in All India Radio. What kind of songs did you record the most? Love song or devotional song or um, a dance song? What kind of song did you record uh, the most? The most, I mean, the, the greatest number of songs you record. All right. I sing all kinds of songs, actually. I don't know which ones I sing the most also. <laughs> devotional songs, patriotic songs and love songs, like uh, songs especially composed for campaign against drugs and alcohols, songs about national integration, the importance of national integration, like, uh, you know, songs on wildlife preservation, importance of cleanliness, and songs for the bereaved, and so on. So, I used to sing all kinds of songs. Yes, it's uh, I can't the say, kind of you know. Of song variety, no? Yeah. 
of those songs, I think some of the songs were also composed by you. Uh, yes, yes, most of my oh. songs recorded are composed I by see, me. I see, I see. My own no, composition. Not only you are a singer, you are also a composer. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, how many cassette audio albums have you produced? Uh, so far, I have produced 30 audio albums. 30? 3 yes, zero. 3 zero, yes. Yes, so much, so <laughs> large number. So I think this you are number one, the largest number of audio albums produced. Yeah, Is there any yeah. other artists who produce such number? Well, I don't think so. I don't think so. Can you also please tell me your first produced album? When did you okay. produce that first? Okay, I'll tell you. In the year 1977, that means almost 30 years back, uh -huh. <laughs> I recorded one audio album uh, containing Mizo Modern songs. It was released in the next year, that is uh -huh. 1978. The music was recorded in Rangoon, though vocal recording was done here in Azol. That wow. was the first uh, audio album. You produced, no? Yeah. Why the vocal was recorded in Mizoram and the music was recorded in you Rangoon? You know, in those days there was no recording studio. In Mizoram? In Mizoram. I see. Uh, only here, all in the radio studio. Okay, was the only okay. recording studio we have. So to produce such album, you had uh, gone through a great difficulty, no? Yeah, yeah. So you had to go yeah. through a Definitely. Great problem. What was the first one? Was the first one among the Mizos? I think album? so. I think yes. It was the first audio album recorded by Mizos in Mizoram. Then, have you any album being made? Okay, yes, I'm working on my 31st audio album, which will contain devotional songs. Yes, you have produced 30, and now we are preparing that 31st. 31st, yes. yes. Good number. Then, in which studio are you recording? The but, one which you are, being, you are making? Mona Lisa Recording Studio. Oh. They are at Bada Bazaar. I see, Azo. I see. So, have you also recorded songs in a television? Where, yes. Uh, if yes, where, when, and how many, and if you can tell me. Okay, I'll try to tell you. Yes, quite a bit of, uh, way back, you know, in 1976, I have recorded at Dutar Shankendra, Delhi, then at Dutar Shankendra, Aizol, and also in cable TV here in local channel. Local channel, in yes. Aizol, no? Yeah. So, do you remember how many songs you recorded in the television? I just can't tell you quite <laughs> oh, many. Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you don't know the exact number. Then have you produced a video album of your own? Uh, if so, if yes, how many? Oh, actually, video I'm working on a music video album from last year, that is uh, 2005. I have recorded six songs already. Uh -huh. Eight more are left. I hope um, it will be released within this year. Within this year? Yes within this year, 2006. Will that be the first video album in Mizora? No, I don't think so. Oh. Maybe the second one. <laughs> if the second one, who has gone before you? You know, a very popular singer, Eng TV, Eng TV. Wutang Vela. Wutang Vela, yes, artist. yes, yes. Yeah. He's a popular singer, a male singer, no? Yes. Yes, now I have come to know that you I recorded many, many songs in All India Radio and Dudas and Kendra, Delhi and Aizol. And you have also produced album of your own. And you yeah. have produced even video album. Yeah, mm. I hope. <laughs> Do you also sing in a group or in a choir? Sure. I sing as a member of the choir, Mizo Choir. Oh. And also in a group where I used to sing contralto. Though I am a soloist, I was a soloist, I used to sing a contralto part in a choir. Yes. Uh, have you visited outside Mizoram or even abroad as a singer? Yes. In the year 1975, I visited the states of Tripura state, many states here in India in our country, Manipur, Assam, as a singer. Uh -huh. In the beginning of 1976 or so, as a member of the Mizo Choir, we traveled for three months, visiting 12 principal cities of India. At that time, I was a soloist in the choir. 
Then, you know, in 1978, during January to May, we traveled around 27 states of the United States of America and Canada as the Mizo Choir, proclaiming the gospel through songs. Uh-huh. At that time, I also was the soloist again of the choir, Mizo Choir. Oh, as you were the, the soloist? Yes. Did you also sing among the other members? Yes, yes. As I have told you, I sang contralto part. Contralto. Besides this also, during, I remember, January 1977, mm-hmm. I attended an evangelistic crusade at Mumbai, Chembur, as a soloist. When you visited USA and Canada, who was your leader? Our leader was Reverend V. Van Lal. Van Lal Yes. He was a choir master or he was a leader? Yeah, he was a leader and a speaker. A speaker. He was a speaker, yeah. Who was your choir master? Choir master choir was Sitan Syama. Upa Sitan Syama. Yes. Do you remember how many were you? Yes, yes, yes. The total number of 20 members? 20 of us. 20. 20. Okay, okay. 20 members. Was that the first time for the Mizou Choir to yes. visit American yeah, continent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. the first time, yeah. We were the first time. I'll ask you another question. Okay. Do you accept the most of the Mizo think of you to be the most popular singer among the Mizo women? That's a very difficult question. Most popular singer, you mean? If people think of me as the most popular singer back in the 70s and 80s, it might be acceptable in a sense, you know, uh-huh. that there were times uh, when all the songs broadcasted as listener's choice happened to be my songs those days, you know. It was obviously that the reason why I was chosen as the most popular Mizo woman, Woman of the Year 1975, was only yes. because of my singing, I think. But today, there are many new artists who are very popular, so I am surely no longer the most popular singer among the Mizo women. Anyway, I don't think I'm the most popular singer now. Anyway, yes. Your time and the new generation is different. As for the football, <laughs> uh, Pele, we know yeah. very well Pele is yes, the yes. king of football. Nowadays, many footballers were maybe better than him. Oh, yeah. But the glory and the greatness of Pele cannot be ignored till today. Yeah. Yeah. Like that, you are chosen the women of the year in 1975. Yeah. This shows that you are the most popular one among the Mizo women. Anyway, I uh, thank you very much. Anyway, <laughs> that is, I think, in the minds of many people. Have you had any training in singing under music institution? I did not have any training as such. Then, how did you train yourself, or who train you, privately, or if it is not under music institution? Okay, you know, in her days, my mother was known to be a good singer. I have told you, I think, my mother was a singer, you know. Oh. She was brought up by the European missionaries. She used to sing. She used to love singing till she was a teacher. I feel that she paved my way, you know, towards singing when she used to let me sing in front of the public while I was uh, really small. So maybe <laughs> my mother was the responsible person. Okay, before we come to other subject, let me go back a bit. You recorded for the first time in All India Radio yeah. three songs. Yes. Can you please sing at least a stanza or a okay. line or two since the new generation, okay. modern young men and women, do not know what song was that. Even the tune they don't know. You mean which I recorded almost 40 years back, you know? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It okay. doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. I have recorded three songs. Which one you mean? I'll sing. Uh, Any one you like. Okay. Nun Lui, Nun Lui. The first one. Yeah, you Nun know, Lui. the tune goes uh, some, like this, you know. The Nun Lui Past Life. Past Life. Oh, yeah. Han Don Vete, Nun Lui Mualiam Nu, Lui Tli Pui Nu Lin Kadon Tina, Le Kir Zai Reng Relo, Oh, Kan Nun Lui. Something oh. like that. Yes, okay. yes. Okay. It's very good. The tune is also good. And the second one, you know, Puan Nang Halo It was my favorite songs. I'll tell you. Then, uh, please, please sing, please sing okay, again, okay. please sing again. I want to hear it. Ah, Puan Nang Halo Chul Zota. 
Bloemen deze. Hoi morgen, Limlijn niet. Lim den kan len lai ni te ta ko ro me ya ya nin bua nang an lo zu zo ta It goes like this. Yes, I have heard over a radio. It was a very popular song, you yes, know, yes, 40 years back. It was back. very popular. Yeah. Even I myself have come to know, <laughs> to hear that. Though nearly 40 years have gone. Yeah. But... Till today and now itself, your voice is more or less the same. <laughs> it's still, I don't think uh, so. It is still sweet. You have a sweet voice till today. Anyway, thank you so much. So, you are a good singer and you recorded many, many There songs. There are many more, I mean, better singers than me, actually. But, but in your days, there were no other person, as people know well, like you. <laughs> Therefore, anyway. I cannot say that you, ah, anyway, it is, it you is so true. It is true that you are the most popular one in the scene <laughs> among the major women. <laughs>